Mika Biomago, My Wonder Horse, by Sabine Ulibari. He was white, white as memories lost. He was free, free as happiness is. He was fantasy, liberty, and excitement. He filled and dominated the mountain valleys and surrounding plains. He was a white horse that flooded my youth with dreams and poetry. Around the campfires of the country and in the sunny patios of the town, the ranch hands talked about him with enthusiasm and admiration. But gradually, their eyes would become hazy and blurred with dreaming. The lively talk would die down, all thoughts fixed on the vision evoked by the horse. Myth of the animal kingdom, poem of the world of men. White and mysterious, he paraded his harem through the summer forests with lordly rejoicing. Winter sent him to the plains and sheltered hillsides for the protection of his females. He spent the summer like an oriental potente in his woodland gardens. The winter lie passed like an illustrious warrior celebrating a well-earned victory. He was a legend. The stories told of the wonder horse were endless, some true, others fabricated. So many traps, so many snares, so many searching parties, and all in vain. The horse always escaped, always mocked his pursuers, always rose above the control of man. Many a valiant cowboy swore to put his halter and his brand on the animal, but always he had to confess later that the mystic horse was more of a man than lie. I was 15 years old. I had never seen the wonder horse. He filled my imagination and fired my ambition. I used to listen open-mouthed as my father and the ranch hands talked about the phantom horse who turned into mist and air and nothingness when he was trapped. I joined in the universal obsession, like the hope of winning the lottery, of putting my lasso on him some day, of capturing him and showing him off on Sunday afternoons when the girls of the town strolled through the streets. It was high summer. The forests were fresh, green, and gay. The cattle moved slowly, fat and sleek in the August sun and shadow. Listless and drowsy in the lethargy of late afternoon, I was dozing on my horse. It was time to round up the herd and go back to the good bread of the cowboy camp. Already my comrades would be sitting around the campfire, playing the guitar, telling stories of past or present, or surrendering to the languor of the late afternoon. The sun was setting behind me in a riot of streaks and colors, deep, harmonious silence. I sit drowsily still forgetting the cattle in the glade. Suddenly the forest falls silent, a deafening quiet. The afternoon comes to a standstill. The breeze stops blowing, but it vibrates. The sun flares hotly. The planet, life, and time itself have stopped in an inexplicable way. For a moment, I don't understand what is happening. Then my eyes focus. There he is, the wonder horse, at the end of the glade, on high ground surrounded by summer green. He is a statue, he is an engraving, line and form, and white stain on a green background. Pride, prestige, and art incarnate in animal flesh. A picture of burning beauty and viral freedom. An ideal, pure and invincible, rising from the internal dreams of humanity. Even today, my being thrills when I remember him. A sharp neigh, a far-reaching challenge that soars on high ripping the virginal fabric of the rosy clouds, ears at the point, eyes flashing, tail waving, active defiance, hooves glossy and destructive, arrogant ruler of the countryside. The moment is never ending, a momentary eternity. It no longer exists, but it will always live. There must have been mares. I did not see them. The cattle went on their indifferent way. My horse followed them, and I came slowly back from the land of dreams to the world of toil. But life could no longer be what it was before. That night under the stars I didn't sleep. I dreamed. How much I dreamed awake, and how much I dreamed asleep, I don't know. I only know that a white horse occupied my dreams and filled them with vibrant sound and light and turmoil. Summer passed and winter came. Green grass gave place to winter snow. The herds descended from the mountains to the valleys and the hollows, 
and in the town they kept saying that the Wonder Horse was roaming through this or that secluded area. I inquired everywhere for his whereabouts. Every day he became, for more, for me, more of an ideal, more of an idol, more of a mystery. It was Sunday. The sun had barely risen above the snowy mountains. My breath was a white cloud. My horse was trembling with cold and fear like me. I left without going to mass, without any breakfast, without the usual bread and sardines in my saddlebags. I had slept badly, but had kept the vigil well. I was going in search of the white light that galloped through my dreams. On leaving the town for the open country, the roads disappear. There are no tracks, human or animal, only a silence, deep, white, and sparkling. My horse breaks trail with his chest and leaves an unending wake, an open rift, in the white sea. My trained, concentrated gaze covers the landscape from horizon to horizon, searching for the noble silhouette of the talismanic horse. It must have been midday, I don't know. Time had lost its meaning. I found him on a slope stained with sunlight. We saw one another on, at the same time. Together we turned to stone, motionless, absorbed, and panting. I gazed at his beauty, his pride, his nobility. As still as sculptured marble, he allowed himself to be admired. A sudden, violent scream breaks the silence. A glove hurled into my face, a challenge and a mandate. Then something surprising happens. The horse that in summer takes a stand between any threat and his herd, swinging back and forth from left to right, now plunges into the snow. Stronger than they, he is breaking trail for his mares. They follow him. His flight is slow in order to conserve his strength. I follow, slowly, quivering, thinking about his intelligence, admiring his courage, understanding his courtesy. The afternoon advances. My horse is taking it easy. One by one, the mares become wary. One by one, they drop off the trail. Alone, he and I. My inner ferment bubbles to my lips. I speak to him. He listens and is quiet. He still opens the way, and I follow in the path he leaves me. Behind us, a long, deep trench crosses the white plain. My horse, which has eaten grain and good hay, is still strong. Undernourished as the wonder horse is, his strength is waning. But he keeps on because that is the way he is. He does not know how to surrender. I now see black stains over his body. Sweat and the wet snow have revealed the black skin beneath the white hair. Snorting breath, turned to steam, tears the air. White spoon above white snow. Sweat, spoon, and steam. Uneasiness. I felt like an executioner, but there was no turning back. The distance between us was growing relentlessly shorter. God and nature watched indifferently. I feel sure of myself at last. I untie the rope. I open the lasso and pull the reins tight. Every nerve, every muscle is tense. My heart is in my mouth. Spurs pressed against trembling flanks. The horse leaps. I whirl the rope and throw the obedient lasso. A frenzy of fury and rage. Whirlpools of light and fans of transparent snow. A rope that whistles and burns the saddle tree. Smoking, fighting gloves. Eyes burning in their sockets. Mouth parched. Fevered forehead. The whole, the whole earth shakes and shudders. The long, white trench ends in a wide, white pool. Deep, gasping, quiet. The wonder horse is mine. Both still trembling, we look at one another squarely for a long time. Intelligent and realistic, he stops struggling and even takes a hesitant step toward me. I speak to him. As I talk, I approach him. At first, he flinches and recoils. Then he waits for me. The two horses greet one another in their own way. Finally, I succeed in stroking his mane. I tell him many things, and he seems to understand. Ahead of me, along the trail already made, I drove him toward the town, triumphant, exultant, childish laughter gathered in my throat. With my newfound manliness, I controlled it. I wanted to sing, but I fought down the desire. I wanted to shout, 
but I kept quiet. It was the ultimate in happiness. It was the pride of the male adolescent. I felt myself a conqueror. Occasionally, the Wonder Horse made a try for his liberty, snatching me abruptly from my thoughts. For a few moments, the struggle was renewed. Then on we went. It was necessary to go through the town. There was no other way. The sun was setting. Icy streets and people on the porches. The Wonder Horse full of terror and panic for the first time. He ran, and my well-shod horse stopped him. He slipped and fell on his side. I suffered for him. The indignity, the humiliation, majesty degraded. I begged him not to struggle, to let himself be led. How it hurt me that other people should see him like that. Finally, we reached home. What should I do with you, Mago? If I put you into the stable or the corral, you are sure to hurt yourself. Besides, it would be an insult. You aren't a slave. You aren't a servant. You aren't even an animal. I decided to turn him loose in the fenced pasture. There, little by little, Mago would become accustomed to my friendship and my company. No animal had ever escaped from that pasture. My father saw me coming and waited for me without a cord. A smile played over his face, and a spark danced in his eyes. He watched me take the rope from Mago, and the two of us thoughtfully observed him move away. My father clasped my hand a little more firmly than usual and said, That was a man's job. That was all. Nothing more was needed. We understood one another very well. I was playing the role of a real man, but the childish laughter and shouting that bubbled up inside of me almost destroyed the impression I wanted to create. That night I slept a little, and when I slept, I did not know that I was asleep. For dreaming is the same when one really dreams, asleep or awake. I was up at dawn. I had to go see my wonder horse. As soon as it was light, I went out into the cold to look for him. The pasture was large. It contained a grove of trees and a small gully. The wonder horse was not visible anywhere, but I was not worried. I walked slowly, my head full of the events of yesterday and my plans for the future. Suddenly, I realized that I had walked a long way. I quicken my steps. I look apprehensively around me. I begin to be afraid. Without knowing it, I begin to run. Faster and faster. He is not there. The wonder horse has escaped. I search every corner where he could be hidden. I follow his tracks. I see that during the night he walked incessantly, sniffing, searching for a way out. He did not find one. He made one for himself. I followed the track that led straight to the fence and I saw that the trail did not stop, but continued on the other side. It was a barbed wire fence. There was white hair on the wire. There was blood on the barbs. There were red stains on the snow and little red drops in the hoof prints on the other side of the fence. I stopped there. I did not go any further. The rays of the morning sun on my face, eyes clouded and yet filled with light, childish cheers on the cheeks of a man, a cry stifled in my throat, slow silent sobs staying there i forgot myself in the world and time i cannot explain it but my sorrow was mixed with pleasure i was weeping with happiness no matter how much it hurt me i was rejoicing over the flight and the freedom of the wonder horse the dimensions of his indomitable spirit now he would always be fantasy freedom and excitement the wonder horse was transcendent he had enriched my life forever my father found me there. He came close without a word and laid his arm around my shoulders. We stood looking at the white trench with red flecks that led into the shining sun.